This is the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding, and when the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars for the Jewish, Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief wine steward. So they took it. And when the steward had tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who drew the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last November, I officiated a wedding, and at the reception, Rob and I were seated at the table with another pastor and her husband. And because we're all, you know, church folk, and because it was a wedding, and we had both water and wine glasses on our table, we got on the subject of this text. We were laughing and joking about what would happen if we took the water pitcher up to the bartender and like said, fill it up with wine, and then said, like, oh, it's a miracle. And another woman seated at our table began to get visibly upset, and she said, yes, it was a miracle, but we don't know if the wine was fermented. You see, we didn't realize that the other couple seated at the table parents of one of the bridesmaids, well, they were probably seated with us because we were the Christian table, right? These, this couple happened to be um, from a more conservative denomination, and the brides probably thought, like, well, let's seat them at the table with the pastors. That's probably the safest place for them at the wedding. Little did they know that the subject of Jesus would come up, right? And here's the thing. We do know that the wine was fermented because wine is fermented, and that's the Greek word used here. There is a different word for unfermented wine or grape juice, and that's not the word used. Also, the wine steward's comments don't make any sense if the wine wasn't alcoholic, but we didn't say any of that because it's not important. The alcohol is not the miracle here. The party is the miracle. The hosts who had completely run out of what they needed, they received it exactly what they needed, exactly when they needed it. That's a miracle. The joy and the love and the connection that continued to flow, the best saved for last, that's the miracle ordinary water transformed into something sublime, something truly extraordinary. That's the miracle. The text tells us that this was the first of Jesus' signs, that he revealed his glory, and the disciples believed. That's the miracle. I spoke about my grandmother's gift for prayer with the children in reference to the, second, the first Corinthians text. And my grandmother and her prayer has been a real foundational pillar of my life. Uh, I've spent many hours praying with my grandmother, being prayed for by my grandmother, nowhere near the number of hours that she has spent in prayer. 
and she can tell you some incredible things that have resulted from prayers and intercessory groups that she works with, places, miracles that she has seen with her own eyes. But the truth is it's not all miracles. Not everyone they pray for is healed. People still battle addiction. People still struggle to make ends meet. People still die. But they aren't alone. They are surrounded by prayers, by the deep peace and the all-encompassing love of the Holy Spirit. So I wonder, what is a miracle? My sister broke her leg in the fifth grade, and we all have this distinct memory of her sitting on the couch right after it happened as my grandmother patted her leg gently, but maybe not quite so gently, and she prayed. We didn't know it was broken at the time because my sister didn't want to say how much those gentle pats really hurt in the middle of the prayer. Now it all healed perfectly eventually. Was it the prayer or was it the cast? In my own life, Jake had COVID on Sunday, but now he's feeling great. Was it the prayer or the vaccine that he got in November? Does it matter? What is a miracle? When our table mate, our friend at the wedding brought up fermentation and the water turned to wine, she was clearly upset. We had accidentally called into question something that is important to her and her faith. Amy Andrews, who was the other pastor seated with us, she punted on the subject of alcohol, and rightly so, but she had the brilliant insight that even unfermented wine is full of natural sugar, a rare commodity in that age, and it would be delicious and special and would make people happy in its own specific way. That, we all agreed, was the important point. We all agreed was the important point. Jesus' miracle at Cana was about people coming together, coming together to celebrate. It was about love and community and joy, which appear even when we are all wrung out, when we think there is no more left, a spark of hope when all seems lost, something to celebrate when we really need it. And we really need it right now, don't we? I can tell you, personally, I am just about done with even the word pandemic. As we head into what is this, the fifth wave, the millionth surge, I'm screaming on the inside. There's all these memes on the internet, and I'm saying, that's me. I'm screaming on the inside. I'm so exhausted that we're not even on plan B or plan C. We've got to be on plan X right now, right? We're about to run out of the alphabet. And yet every time we reach the end, there's more. More ingenuity, more courage, more grit, more hope more miracles every day. Ordinary, extraordinary things, right? Like hand soap is a miracle. Antibiotics, certainly a miracle. Teachers, oh my goodness, teachers and nurses are a miracle. Airplanes, helicopters, babies, butterflies, the list goes on and on and on. Fleas, I think, that can survive just about anything. Church folk, or maybe I should say the church folks, the faith of church folk, I think is a certain kind of miracle. There's something here that gets into our bones and grows into our hearts that draws us back again and again and again to the hymns and the prayers and the pews and the confessions and the stories 
we catch a glimpse of that glory, that holy light, those signs and wonders. They speak to us, they echo in our hearts. And we believe, 